tonight's lineup, IPA takes registration online. Women entrepreneurs take center stage during Westpac Outstanding Women Awards and a report from the 2013 APEC Leaders Meeting that was held in Bali earlier this month. Good evening, I'm Dennis Orere. Welcome to the show. Investment Promotion Authority registrations will soon go online. This has been revealed by IPA last week during the formal launching of their campaign for the promotion of IPA's new online registration system. When the system comes into operation, registrations and lodgements can now be done online, virtually anywhere, all at the click of a button. The go-live date for this new system will be the 25th of next month. We are targeting the 25th of November for us to launch. It has been set and the date's locked in. The countdown has now begun and the 25th of November is the date the Investment Promotion Authority will be launching their new online registry system. From the 25th of November onwards, all business registrations and lodgements can now be done online. The system will enable clients to register new companies, business names, associations and business groups online without the need to queue up at IPA's counters at Konedobu. Apart from this, existing company lodgements and searches can also be done online, virtually from anywhere that has connection to the internet. Speaking at a press conference last Wednesday, Investment Promotion Authority's Managing Director, Ivan Pomalil, formally launched the awareness campaign of the new online registry system. So today is about uh, announcing that uh, the IPA will go all out to try and uh, create uh, uh, critical awareness of what, what's on offer, what sort of benefits are likely to come out of this scheme. We will be talking to um, the country and globally through various means to, to alert them to the new service that we are about to provide um, from the 25th of November onwards. The new online registry system comes as part of IPA's reforms that will enable aspiring Papua New Guineans and entrepreneurs to register businesses easily without the hassle of waiting. The new system also comes hand in hand with the government's 12-point stimulus package as well as Papua New Guinea's effort in trying to move up the ease of doing business list where according to the World Bank, PNG currently sits at 104, a position behind Pacific neighboring countries such as Fiji, Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. In terms of the system that uh, we will switch on on the 25th of November, uh, simply the online registration will ensure that all companies, business-related uh, lodgements will now be able to be done uh, online um, at the comfort of someone's home 24-7. Uh, uh, you'll be able to pay your uh, fees and, and lodge documents um, uh, 24 7 so at the switch on of that service we'll basically open uh, counters um, right throughout the night and on weekends uh, and hopefully getting a lot more compliance uh, in terms of uh, documents that need to come through as well as increased registration of, of entities and provide a little bit more efficiencies in terms of turnaround times uh, compared to the case that we have now where you, you either send application by mail or you spend a couple of hours downstairs on the registry line to, to be served. So that's something that we definitely looking forward to. The online registry system is a web-based software that has been developed by New Zealand-based software development company, Foster More Limited. The project has also come this far due to the long-term partnership that the Investment Promotion Authority has had with the International Finance Corporation. This project is being implemented in partnership with International Finance Corporation. We uh, are a, a, a member of the World Bank Group, uh, a, a partnership that we've had since 2008 addressing a few key issues relating to the doing business environment 
uh, in Papua New Guinea. At rollout, the method of payment will include payment by credit card. But the Investment Promotion Authority, together with mobile service providers, are still in the process of finalizing payments that can be done through mobile phones. The Investment Promotion Authority will be conducting a campaign to promote as well as to educate the public on their new online registry system. During the course of the campaign, IPA will also be visiting all provincial centres to create awareness on their new system. Next month, when the online registry system is up and running, processing times for applications can take as short as 24 hours. We'll bring you more updates on this new system in our later episodes. Coming up next, the Westpac Outstanding Women Awards. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Hundreds turned up at the Gateway Hotel last Wednesday to witness the Westpac Outstanding Women Awards. The awards comprised of five coveted categories as well as the overall winner's award. Agriculturalist Maria Linneby not only took home the Trukai Community Award but was also endowed as the overall winner of the 2013 Westpac Outstanding Women Awards. Here's Leanne Jorari with the highlights. In a largely patriarchal nation, where even the culture represents males as sole heads of the house and the females are often seen as mere possessions, women emerging from such backgrounds to accomplish great achievements, be it in the public or private sector, are lauded and highly valued. In the 21st century, it is not rare to find independent and self-sufficient women around the country. One of these is the case of Varo Renagi, a young woman from the village of Hula in the central province. Varo owns and runs a barber shop in the busy suburb of Barocco, where she stands out around her largely male clientele and employee base. Inspired by other successful hairdressers in the area, Varo started her business regardless of the economic environment as a means of providing for her family. The help only came from my husband. He wanted to start his own business from his dad and then he found out that it was hard, a little bit hard to start a construction company so we decided to do something different and then we went around all, all like looking looking what type of business we wanted to do and then I realized Baba was something that you know made money fast money and all that so we decided to run a business like a Baba business so that's how I got inspired by other barber shops and all that thing. When asked what motivated her to begin her own business instead of working for someone else, Varo had this to say. I would say it's better to be your own boss, like do your own thing, than to work for others. It, would, it will make you, um, you know, grow into an independent woman and, you know, mostly people think men are more stronger than the woman. But when you, when you live something like, you know, live in something like this, you try to equalize yourself with men and all things. Recognizing and rewarding exceptional women in business, such as Varo, was the aim of the recent Westpac Outstanding Women Awards. The event, which took place last Wednesday at the Gateway Hotel in Port Moresby, was well attended. Now in its seventh year of running, Managing Director for Westpac PNG, Ashley Matheson, stated that the bank aims to create a program that highlights outstanding achievements made by women and help foster the next generation of leaders by putting women on a pedestal and giving them the tools and opportunities to be on the world stage. The 2013 WOW Awards comprise five categories. The Price Waterhouse Coopers Private Sector Award, the Steamships Public Sector Award, the SP Brewery Entrepreneur Award, and the IBBM Young Achiever Award, as well as one overall winner. Antonia Apurel was the winner of the Private Sector Award, recognizing her contributions as a manager at Trukai Industries. The award was sponsored by PricewaterhouseCoopers. The Steamships Public Sector Award was awarded to pediatrician Dr. Mobuma Kiramat for her commitment to the health sector. The SP Brewery Entrepreneur Award was given to Sarah Shelley, recognizing her innovations in winemaking. 
The Young Achievers Award, sponsored by IBBM, was awarded to Doris Cheryl Mondumolis for her achievement in the hospitality industry. Finally, agriculturist Maria Linneby took home the Trukai Community Award as well as the overall Westpac Outstanding Woman of the Year Award. Premium recognition similar to this can empower, inspire, and add value to the PNG businesswoman as well as women aspiring to venture into business. Congratulations to all the awardees of this year's 2013 Westpac Outstanding Women Awards. Coming up after the break, bilateral ties strengthened and agreements signed. A report from the 2013 APEC Leaders Summit that was held earlier this month. Welcome back to Business PNG. Papua New Guinea has won the bid to host the 2018 APEC meeting. This comes after a successful 2013 APEC meeting led by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill to Bali in Indonesia earlier this month. At the meeting, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia also signed an action plan on the implementation of comprehensive partnership between the two countries. The action plan is a follow-up of Prime Minister O'Neill's visit to Indonesia several months ago to strengthen bilateral ties between the two countries. MTV journalist and reporter Benedict Effie with this special report. Bali, a paradise destination amongst tourists and holiday makers. But until recently, Bali was the host city to the 2013 APEC Leaders Meeting. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill arrived in Bali earlier this month. He was accompanied by his wife and Anga Governor Peter Ipathas. Foreign Affairs Minister Rimbing Pato and Trade, Commerce and Industry Minister Richard Maru arrived earlier for the APEC ministerial meetings, met the Prime Ministerial delegation upon arrival. The APEC leaders meeting was held at the Sofitel Hotel for two days. The leaders held dialogue with the APEC Business Advisory Committee or ABEC members. Mr. O'Neill held bilateral meetings on the periphery of the APEC summit with Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia and Vietnam. With Australia, he met and talked with the Australian Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, for the first time. They talked about the issue on Octedi and Manus, just to name a few. On Octedi, he told Mr. Abbott that government's takeover of the mine was in the best interest of the people of Papua New Guinea and the Western Province. Uh, Octedi issue was uh, not uh, brought up at all, and uh, I think uh, this matter is in the mindset of only one person, that is Makere Morata, who represents uh, <coughs> BHP, who represents foreign interest in, our, in that particular board of sustainable. He represents no one in Papua New Guinea. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's constantly going out to the press, putting public advertisement. Uh, Papua New Guinea is sick and tired of listening to him. Uh, his record as Prime Minister is very clear. He privatized uh, PNGBC against Papua New Guinea's uh, uh, <coughs> will and Papua New Guinea's uh, uh, desire to privatize that. Uh, he legislated against Papua New Guinea's on the environmental damage on Fly River. Uh, he gave control. Uh, under the disguise of giving it to Papua New Guineans and gifting Octedi to Papua New Guineans, he gave control back to BHP on Octedi. So Papua New Guineans are not going to be fooled by this uh, kind of nonsense that uh, Semekere continues to, to uh, uh, mislead our people on. And I think uh, it is only in his mindset 
uh, the Australian government has got no problem with that. They know that this is a uh, uh, mine that is owned by the people of Papua New Guinea. The mining lease has expired, so we are now taking ownership of that mine ourselves. No foreign investor is being affected by this particular decision. Papua New Guineans need financial security. Our people need financial security, <coughs> and this is an opportunity for us to do so. So uh, la, let uh, no, no person blind uh, our, our, our vision before us. I think it's important that uh, Papua New Guineans now step up. The rest of the world is now uh, looking at us. On the Manus deal, Mr. Abbott said his government will honor all the commitments made by the Rudd government. Similar talks were held by the two foreign ministers, Julie Bishop and Rimbing Pato as well. Australia expressed concerns on Octeti that the actions of government would send a negative signal to investors. Mr. Pato, on the other hand, said there is nothing to worry about because the takeover of the mine is a win-win situation for both investors and resource owners. Well, she was, I think uh, it was based on, uh, on some misconception because of the way in which the media was reporting it. And what I did say to her is, her is that as a partner of Papua New Guinea and, and a long-term friend, it's the duty of Australia and PNG together to get the correct message out there. In this case, the fundamentals haven't worked, the people have not benefited, to the new arrangement, we'll make sure that the people will benefit, that the lease uh, in respect of the Oak Teddy mine has expired anyway. And so we're entitled to give the lease to any company or any developer or any investor. And as such, we are, we are free to do uh, what we have done. Therefore, if there's any misconception, let's get the facts out to the people. Let's tell them that the government's position is this and the court has ruled and uh, the fundamentals of the, uh, the, the existing structure, the trust for and on behalf of the interests of the people of the Western province has not worked. So the government is taking that position on behalf of the people. So the message has to be um, put to the Australian people and the public at large that PNG is clearly a, uh, a, an investment destination and, and the rule of law prevails here as the court has ruled in this particular case. Mr. O'Neill also met with his New Zealand counterpart, Prime Minister John Key, at the Conrad Hotel where they discussed issues of mutual interest to both countries. New Zealand, like Australia, always had a close relationship with PNG, especially with the role it played in the restoration of peace and normalcy on the island of Bougainville immediately after the crisis. But PNG focused more on strengthening ties with Asia's growing economies Indonesia, Vietnam and Thailand, following its go-ahead by members of the APEC to host a 2018 APEC meeting in Port Moresby, Foreign Affairs Minister Rimbing Pato and his Indonesian counterpart Dr. Mati Natalegawa signed the Action Plan Agreement. This now enables various agreements signed between the two countries in June this year to be implemented immediately. Mr. O'Neill and Indonesian President Susilo Bangbang Yudhoyono were present to witness this event. Mr. O'Neill said PNG's involvement with Indonesia does not end on economic, social and infrastructural agreements, but on humanitarian grounds as well, especially on the part of the West Papuans. On the topic of tariffs, Minister for Trade, Commerce and Industry Richard Maru talked strongly about the other side of the coin. The second thing it means, uh, all our local industries will not be able to compete with goods from other countries which, which are able to be produced far cheaper than PNG and can be sent to PNG at far less cost than we can even produce it. For example, if, they, if we open up the market and remove uh, duty on things like Coca-Cola, you'll find that Coca-Cola from Singapore will be far cheaper than Coca-Cola we even make in Port Moresby. Therefore, all the employees of uh, Coca-Cola will lose their jobs. Chicken from Australia will be, is far, we know it's far cheaper than chicken we can even produce in PNG. So we will lose uh, New Guinea table beds and 3,000 jobs will go. So the danger for Papua New Guinea when it joins countries like APEC and we are pushing towards uh, an agenda like this is v very big and the, uh, the multiply effect of uh, 
meeting all the, the requirements they have under the BOGA goals, which we must achieve by 2020, is quite frightening, to be very honest with you. But the Prime Minister is adamant all will work out for PNG. Of course, the, uh, the World Trade Organization uh, discussions are continuing. There's a uh, concern that it might uh, fail, and of course, as a result of that, uh, uh, allow countries to go back into uh, protecting their own economies and uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, not uh, imp implement the uh, liberalization of tariffs in many of those economies, which will then uh, be uh, detrimental to many uh, economies growing. Now, of course, we have that similar concerns for our emerging economy in our own country. Uh, but one thing that we have to do as a country is to in, uh, improve on the efficiencies of the economy, uh, which will enable us to become more competitive. You see, we are trying to protect our economy uh, of not reducing the tariffs, uh, trying to maintain, maintain uh, our, our economy as a sheltered <coughs> economy. Uh, but that is a short-term so so benefit to uh, our, 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 our economy and our people. I think in our long term we must uh, improve on the the uh, quality of of the delivery and infrastructure and and of course the efficiencies that uh, we as a government need to do and private sector. The latest inclusions in the PNG bilateral ties include Vietnam and Thailand. The prime minister said these two countries have the best agricultural practices that PNG can adopt. Bilateral ties with these two will not only benefit our agriculture and other resource sectors, but it will book a place for PNG in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. And that's all we've got lined up for you tonight. If you would like to watch this episode or any of our previous episodes again, visit www.mtv.com.pg and go to our Business PNG page. Just a reminder that for the upcoming four episodes starting from next week, Business PNG will be airing at 9pm to accommodate for the Rugby League World Cup. Until next week, join me at 9. I'm Denis Orere. Have a pleasant week. Bye for now.